again. Welcome to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our good friend, coach, mentor, John Obolewski. How are you today, John? Hey, Jim. I'm doing well. And once again, it's always good to spend time with you. I think I think right. the recording, I love using recording podcasts as an excuse yeah. to spend time with you. And right uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, just love, uh, love you and uh, love our friendship and that we get to do this podcast together so much fun for us it's funny you mentioned that that you know being together is is like a cheeseburger for our souls it's just it's good and and part of that is i don't think there's any real pressure i you know what i mean there's no we're we're partners but we're not boss and employee we're not um you know where our lives are synced because god put us together and we're accountable but not in a you know in a way that would hurt us or you know there there, there's there's if you do this i'm going to do that there's it's just a gift our friendship is a gift. And as we look at today, um, we're, we're going to talk about a gift that God has given to all mankind that very few of us practice well and open regularly. And yet it's a it's a regular gift for the rest of our lives. This gift will be waiting for us. And yet how many guys do we know they're hurting by guys? I mean, men and women that are hurting because they don't open this gift on a regular basis and they're ignoring right. basic rhythms that God has made as a a blessing and a constraint upon his creation. You want to tell us more about episode 194? Sure. And uh, Jim, you gave me the idea for this, actually. So I want to give you credit uh, <laughs> for it. And uh, the title is called Rhythms of the Garden. And uh, we're talking about the rhythms that were that we observe at the very beginning yeah. uh, in the Bible. Uh, yeah, I've been, Jim, I've been a Christian for over four decades now. Um, and as I as I think about that and I reflect on all the years of God's incredible mercy yeah. and grace and faithfulness and his goodness, it, it really is hard to put into words how grateful I am. I feel I feel my la- my language is deficient in being able mm. to describe it. Yeah. Um, I do know this that life with Jesus has been an incredible journey. Yeah. Um and and I think I mentioned this a little bit in the last episode that, you know, the Bible, it just never gets boring or no. stale <laughs> or no. old uh, to me. Huh. And uh, I've been spending some time in Galatians and Ephesians. And it's I told you last uh, week that it feels like I was reading it for the first time. Yeah. Um, and uh, awesome. I've been spending a lot of time thinking uh also uh, in the book of genesis especially chapters one and two yeah and finding myself really amazed all over again how many timeless principles in those first two chapters there are you know the principle of it's not good for the man to be alone uh we we mentioned that in uh episode 193 you know adam lived in perfection and still he needed another human to do life with um, yeah. Another timeless principle of leaving and cleaving, uh, uh, principle of boundaries, you know, the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you know, you can eat all yeah. of it, but don't go there. Yeah. And, and God set this, this boundary. And, and so there are so many of these timeless, uh, amazing yeah. truths and principles that in there, <clears throat> but in yes. today's part, I'd like us to consider another timeless principle located in these first two chapters and 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 they are rhythms of the yeah. garden yeah. and i i observe there's probably more but i observe at least yeah. three garden of eden rhythms and i'd like yes. us to i'd Love like it. us to unpack those together and I, I think too to say this is the way before there was a fall before there was pride before there was shame the, you know what i mean this this yeah. is this is what, what man was called to do when in right relationship with God. And because of the cross, we are called back to original mm-hmm. rhythms because we, we too don't have, we, our pride has been forgiven. Our shame has been forgotten. Our, right. So we, when we're in right standing, these rhythms will echo. It really is an echo from the garden of Eden into the lives of believers today. Yeah. So I, I, I I'd like us to go through three. Some of these are, are, yeah will be easy to unpack. The third one's going to be a little, a little interesting. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where we're going to land with that third one, but here we go. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so the first <clears throat> one is, is we observe this daily cadence, this, yeah. this daily rhythm 
uh, you know, and we see it in the unfolding of the creation process. You know, there is this creative burst of mm -hmm. energy by God, yes. the spoken word, and, and then this energy is released and it's creative and it's amazing and it's powerful. But that burst is followed by a pause. Yeah. And, you know, if that, if that only happened once, if, yeah, I think we could probably still derive the same principle here, but it happened six times. Yeah, right. God did that six times. And I think, I don't know if this is true. This is just the way I, I perceive some of these things. Sometimes yeah. I think God is repetitive because it takes us humans. Yeah. Uh, we need to be shown something multiple times before we get the aha moment. Like, wow, this must be important. Right. Well, right. there must be something to it. Um, and so I think maybe God do, did that for us for many reasons. But one of the reasons is to drive home uh, this point, you know, that uh, or actually the following points. One, that our daily work needs hard edges. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody needs to hear that, it's pastors. Yes. Yeah. Because we don't punch a clock. Many of us do not have supervision, direct supervision over us, uh, yeah. you know, uh, watching when we punch in, when we punch out, what we're doing. Yes. Our work happens at odd times yeah. often. Yeah. And uh, and there is a there is an interruptive nature at points to what we yeah. do. Yes. All that being said, you know, and I love this. This thought comes from Michael Hyatt. He said, our daily work needs hard edges yes here's what yeah. i've observed mm. that many many leaders don't do well without prescribed starting and stopping points yeah for their day now the day in the life of a pastor there's no one day that probably looks the same totally yeah. right right it, but look just because one day of your week blows up doesn't mean all your days need to blow up yeah doesn't mean you don't need uh, a starting time yes. and a stopping time. Yep. And, uh, you know, so Jim, I think one of the garden rhythms is that our daily work has this finish line to it. Uh, yes. And this line is where we transition from our professional life, from our work to our personal life. Right. What do you think about that one? Yeah. I, I, and again, since we're, we're talking about creation and Genesis one and two, if, if you study whatever God created, look at their eyes. Their eyes will tell you what they were created for. So our, our eyes are not nocturnal. When it gets dark, we can't see. What is what is God saying? You know, when the sun comes up, there's work to be done in the heat of the day, but then the cool of the day, God comes and visits at night. I can't see. There's nothing I can do. There's no mention of fire, I believe, right? There's no, there's no reason to cook food. And they, they didn't fight night. It was a time to rest. They were protected. They were provided for. It, they, they could hear each other's voice, but they couldn't see each other's face. And there was something about that. They, they then, you know, their hearts began to open. They, they began to dream. They began to share things. They wouldn't share when they were working on the garden, but they would share laying there in the cool of the night after they just spent time walking with, with God, with their creator. I, I think, you know, there's, there's reasons why raccoons can see at night and people can't. Raccoons are scavengers. They're supposed to run around getting into our garbage cans in the middle of the night. That's, that's their purpose in creation. Our purpose is to, to work and to stop. And I know we have light switches and smartphones and TV sets, but anybody that studies the human brain will tell you those things are actually damaging the creative purpose of the human brain. It's yeah. it's not it's not a good thing. It's like uh, it's like getting a, a shot of speed when when it would be better just to sleep. Our brains, you know, some people have a real hard time falling asleep at night, and so doctors will say, "Well, what is your what are your habits prior to turning yeah. that light off?" And they're watching TV while they're on the smartphone with music playing and everything like. Well, no wonder you're 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 it's pretending it's daytime the sun doesn't go down like that the sun right. goes down very slowly and we realize it's coming to an end and i have to stop and and yeah. then by the time we're sitting around a campfire we're all exhausted and it's eight o'clock at night how did that happen well our our melatonin our serotonin levels all kick in so i i think it's very very important we we take for granted uh, modern technology can be a wonderful servant but it makes a terrible master yeah. because it gives us the 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 means by which we can really destroy ourselves. So I like yeah. that creative burst. It's sunrise, time to go, man. And now it's sunset. It's time to rest. Yep. 
I, the way I kind of characterize this first <clears throat> rhythm is this, that all work and no play makes us dull. Yes. Yeah. Makes us anxious. And it actually makes us less productive. Yes. And, and yes. not much use to the most important people in our life. Yeah. This daily rhythm. We, we talk about this all the time, Jim. Uh, yes. And um, it, the Lord has shown us a way to do things yeah. that helps us actually be more accomplished without destroying um, yes. people in the process and ourselves in the process. But let me ask you this as a coach, but also you you do a lot of coaching for people that have, that have really burned out that really, if you yeah. have a, a gift when it comes to coaching, it's like, I'm done, not just with pastoring, I'm done. What, what percentage of the people that, that need professional time with, with the, a caregiver are there because they believed lies and liars and they're out of rhythm in their day to day? What percentage do you think that's why they're there? 95%. Right. So, I mean, so in other words, it might be all 90, of them. But... Right. So if 95%, you know, believe the truth, discarded the lies, got into the right rhythms that we're describing here, mm-hmm. they, they, they will not need professional, you know, compassionate care. They'll be the professional compassionate caregivers. And there are other pieces to that. You know, sure. uh, you know, there's, you know, we talked in 193 about relationships, our marriage, yes. you know, taking yeah. care of our body, our walk with Jesus, all of that influences burnout. Absolutely. Uh, our Absolutely. burnout levels. Yeah. But I would say this, that I, I think this is accurate. 95% of clients who come to us and say, I'm in, I'm done. Or I'm yeah. I'm on the edge. I'm in big they trouble. Have a, they have a, a an arrhythmia. Yes. Problem. Yes. Uh, among other problems, but th- that that one is almost always present in right. one way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, and that leads us to the second garden rhythm, yeah. and that's a a Sabbath r- rhythm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we all know this, right? We observed, yeah. you know, that God created Adam and Eve, uh, or created Adam. A man on the sixth day, right? Yeah, and uh, and then after he he said, "Oh, this is very good," right? Yeah, and, and he rested. Yeah, and then you know, so the text tells us that it also says us that God blessed the seventh day, yeah, and made it holy. He made yeah. it separate. He made yes. it yeah. He made day seven was different yeah. from days one through six. And and this particular rhythm was so important that it made it into the top ten commandments. Yeah, it made the top ten, and and I think it's funny. I, I actually don't think it's funny. I just think it's odd hmm. that we wouldn't think about violating the other nine commandments, right? Or if we did disobey one of them, there would be swift repentance. Yeah, but somehow we give ourselves a pass. On commandment number four. Yeah. And I, I want to challenge our thinking there. <clears throat> yeah. Just think about that for a minute. Would 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 God be okay with you putting other gods before him? We absolutely know the answer to that, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Right. No. And, yeah. and so in our, and I don't know if this is a human problem or if it's a Western problem. But in our thinking, somehow we tell ourselves that commandment number four is less important. Yeah. Pastors do this a lot. Yes. And and so Sunday's not your Sabbath. If you're a pastor, Sunday is no. not your Sabbath. No. I mean, it's just not. You gotta it's Paul even discuss Paul discussed this yeah. in, in his letters. Say, look, you gotta find a different day, right? right. Uh to observe observe sabbath especially if you're a, a, in in ministry um but god said he showed us he demonstrated it for us and it made it into the top 10 it's it's a thread throughout the entire old testament and it's referenced multiple times yes an everlasting ordinance yeah that's right. it's called an everlasting ordinance yeah so this rhythm isn't something new it isn't something that um, we're pitching today so that you can be lazy. Yeah. It's not 
it's not, you know, some people think, well, this, you know, your generation doesn't know how to work hard. Listen, my generation has the other problem. Yeah. We, we have the other side of the problem. Workaholism is a, is a real issue. Um, so this has got nothing to do with pop psychology. This has nothing to right. do with, this is a biblical theme. It's yeah. timeless. It, it's, and and it's such an important part of being well. I I I, I could talk about this the, the rest of the time. Yeah. I I think there's so many things that Sabbath does for us. But I was just thinking about this one this morning. Sabbath yeah. keeps us from getting full of ourselves. Yes, it does. Yeah. All the achievement, all the accomplishment. Every day I remind myself, man, God's this is God's baby. <clears throat> He doesn't show up. None of this is happening. None of that. <laughs> right. And yeah. and it just is. It's humbling. Yeah. Every week I need to be humbled yeah. and remember. So much of what happens yeah. is God. Now I have a part to play in that, right? Not on my day off, I don't. Right. Right. And and so this second rhythm, Jim. We've I think we've talked mm -hmm. about this exhaustively on the podcast but i'm no less passionate about it uh today than i've ever i'm, I'm more passionate about it now than i think i've ever been <clears throat> yeah. your thoughts on this second I, I i think this is what the problem i can run into is jesus did some work on the sabbath healed people the, the pharisees are all upset about it he picked some heads of grain he and his disciples they ate them the pharisees upset about it so it appears that you know jesus never murdered and that was okay or use the lord's name in vain or you know worship other gods so it, it appears there is a difference to this, but I, but I think this is the this is where we get in trouble as we say, aha, because he he picked some heads of grain and ate them, or he, he did a miracle that somehow this has been abolished, that there is no such thing as the Sabbath anymore. It's is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath, Jesus says. And the answer is obviously it's rhetorical. The answer is yes. Yeah. But but I also say this that the original, the the cause of the original sin, as I understand it, was the devil said. God's God's commandments are actually restrictive. He's keeping you from something better than the rhythms and the mandates and the you know this. There's something better, and if you do it, if you do it another way, you'll 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 be in a better place than doing doing it God's way. And I think we fall. We're in danger of the same the same sin, if you will. That yes, I know it's a day off, but Jesus worked on the day off. Well, wait a minute, picking out a grain or healing a blind man in the synagogue is very different than doing yard work or social work or you know, writing your message or doing, or, the, or doing nine to five, doing nine uh, to five. It's different. It's very, very yep. different. And so I, I would say, I would say that believing that you can accomplish more your way than God's way is, is a, is we're right back to that fruit. We're right back to that tree. The serpent goes, no, go ahead. It's no big deal. Matter of fact, doing it God's way is actually restrictive. That's the old covenant. That's the old Testament. That's an old truth. The world doesn't work that way. Your people work five days a week and then they want to do something on Saturday. And so that, you know, and Sunday because, but I, I get that, but they're coming to a, a recreative, a recreational event. You're not recreating at church on Sunday. You're not recreating at a gathering on Saturday. Well, you're, you're expending it. I'm you're right. expending. On energy. So expending and spending. So, well, now we're going to work nine yeah. to five, but then our people are off in the evening. So they want to get together with us. That's when we do our counseling. That's when we're free. That's when they're free. So that's when we have to make ourselves free. And and I, I think it comes down for this for me is I, I, I believe that I can be right with God and, and never observe another Sabbath in a legal Old Testament way. But why would I ever want to? I, I, I can dig a hole one of two ways. I can get a shovel and with my power, I can dig a hole or I can get a hold of a backhoe and with its power, accomplish more in five minutes than I can accomplish in five days. And I think the Sabbath is a gift that it is a commandment, but it's, it's it's a command towards a gift, if that makes sense. It, it's not, in other words, I, am I sinning? Probably. Am I going to hell for not observing sundown Friday to sundown Saturday? No, that, that law has been fulfilled. But the principle of that law is still very much in force. I, I, can, I can deny gravity by getting on an airplane, but I can't deny gravity by jumping out of it with, without a parachute. And I think that's what we're doing. We're denying the Sabbath because we, we have to do it. It's, we are responsible. We can't honor God. We can't stop. And if we say that, we're, we're saying a lot. We're believing a lie and we're empowering the liar. And our families need us to take a Sabbath. Our, our friends need us to take a Sabbath. 
God has given us this gift. It is wrong to, to ignore it. And I'll, I'll quote Jim Baker here. Many of us would know, the older guys would know Jim Baker was. He did not observe a Sabbath for year after year after year after year. And it, when he got out of prison, he counted the number of days that he was in prison. And it was roughly the number, if not exactly the number of Sabbaths he ignored. And his point was, God will get his Sabbaths one way or the other. And Excuse me. And I would say this, that a um, couple of thoughts there, Jim. Yeah. I appreciate the, the uh, thought process of principle versus law here. Yeah. Um, and, and so does your day off blow up sometimes? Yes. Yeah. If you're in the ministry, it, it, even in, in normal life, it can happen, right? It yeah. seems to happen more in the ministry, I think. Yeah. Um, so will you miss a day off some weeks? Yeah, you probably will. Yeah. Um, but there's this principle at play yes. that um, here, here's where I am. And here's why I think if you struggle with this, you need to be really strict with yourself for a while. Yeah, 40 days maybe. Because Yeah, it might be that. Yeah. Um, because it is so easy, Jim. One week becomes two weeks. Yes. Two weeks becomes four weeks. I've talked to past. I talked to a missionary said, I haven't had a day off in four years. Oh, no. And oh, my no. first my first thing I said back to him is, that, are you crazy? Yeah. Now, that probably wasn't kind. But I, yeah. I just couldn't help myself. We had a good discussion. You know, we're still friends. He didn't, you know, we like each other. Yeah. But I said, are you, are you, who do you think you are? Yeah. And, and so that's my concern is that um, we get sloppy with this yes. rhythm and we start to think, I don't need that, you know? Um, yeah. And the truth of the matter is that there, you do need it. And yes. I, I yes. encourage pastors if you miss a day off, try to make that up the following week. Yeah. You know, and, try and, to... and, and maybe this is that reactive being wise, but this last point that we have, there's actually a proaction to, to the Sabbath. Like, no, I, right. I need to, I need rest because it's been such a long week. I need rest. That's true. But you know, introduce that, that third thought because I, it goes beyond just you need rest because maybe you do, maybe you don't, but, but there's something that comes out of stillness and that third point that I think is important. Yeah, and and so, you know, not only did God rest on the seventh day, apparently Adam did too. Yeah. Um, and then we read in Genesis two fifteen. After that rest, it says the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it. Yeah. And to take care of it, and so his work started after Sabbath. Not it wasn't yes. he wasn't working towards Sabbath. He was working. From, from from Sabbath. Sabbath. That's a so, huge point. That's it. I, I mean, please, if you're listening and you're not getting what we're saying, you're resisting it. No, I'm I'm blue collar. I work hard. I'm not lazy. My old man was a factory worker. I like I, I get all that. Now, now put it aside because some of the best stuff you're ever created to do, you will not get to unless you rest. I, I think that's yeah. an absolutely true statement here. Yeah. And I and, and so this this is kind of like an overarching rhythm I think we see in the garden. And and it's it's working from rest instead of for rest. Now, to be yeah. frank, I've worked for rest a good chunk of my life. Sure. Yeah. And so this is a new thought. And this is the part of the pod that I'm not sure where we're going to land the plane here. But um, because this is something that is still in, in I'm still wrestling with this thought process. Yeah. But working from rest postulates the, the following we don't work so we can rest we rest so we can work yes yeah and you know like i said my historically my experience has been i get to the end of a full week and sabbath they appears just in time to just rescue me you yes. know yeah um and uh and recover and so i've asked this question what comes first yeah. Is it rest and then, and then work, or is it work and then rest? Is it the chicken or is it the egg? Um, give me your thoughts on that. And yeah, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm still, as you can tell, I'm still trying to work my way through that one. Yeah, Genesis on one twenty eight. Genesis one twenty eight. God tells Adam, "Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it." You think you got a to do list? Yeah. Fill the earth, 
So 25,000 miles in every direction you can point your finger. I want children. I want cities. I want worship. I want, I want beauty. I, and is it on your mark? This is day, day six now. And your mark gets set day seven. He gave him his assignment and then he gave him a day before he had to start anything. And, and I think, man, if anything, if anything true in my life, it's, it's, this has got to be one of the top 10 true statements of my life. I need to be creative. I need boredom to be inspired. I need stillness. I am, people say, I, I, you know, do you suffer from ADHD? I, I don't. The people around me suffer from my ADHD, but I actually enjoy it. It's, but, but I know this, like when I'm driving, you ever drive up north, up, up I-75, there's, there's parts of road that are so straight, you don't need a steering wheel. You don't need to buy a Tesla to have a self-driving car. You can go to sleep and you wake up in Alpina because it's just, it's just a straight shot up 75. Um, it's during those times when my family's all falling asleep in the car that God begins to speak to my heart. When I'm mowing grass, going down, turning around, coming back, going, turning around, okay. it's, it's, in, it's in monotony that beauty in my soul is realized. And I, I think some of the best things I've ever said have come out of long runs, long drives, silence, stillness, and even the pain. For me, boredom is painful. Some people go, it's it's inconvenient. It's not inconvenient to me. It's it, it probably the most emotionally painful part of my life is having to sit through an hour long meeting that I don't want to be in. It, it is maybe you, maybe you're like that in school. I've been like that my whole life. So join us this, especially Zoom meetings with 14 people on it talking about stuff that doesn't matter that you're not a part of. I am, I am known in my church and my staff when they start talking about what color should the lanyards be? I, I just get up and go take a break and they, they know I, I'm not gonna be a part of this conversation. It's not what I do, but isn't it interesting that in those daydreaming moments in those still small moments and those monotonous canoeing by yourself, kayaking by yourself moments, God begins to speak. I, I, I cannot create art between nine to five. I can paint a wall between nine and five. I can't create a masterpiece between nine and five. There has to be inspiration. There has to be time. I can write a sermon every week, but I can't write a book every week. I need I need time. I need early morning, late evening. So I would just say this. I think I think God is trying to get His best work through His people, and He inspires us when we're when we're a little bored, a little a little restless. So what am I going to do on my day off? I got to find some, just. What if you did nothing but listen? you know, for 24 hours and worshiped. And, and then you came out of rest with this to-do list. I think it's okay to make a to-do list on Sabbath. I think it's okay. I don't think it's okay to do your to-do list on Sabbath. Yeah. But if you planned your week and a day of rest and you planned your meals and you planned and all that beautiful groundwork was done by the time the first day of work comes along, whatever that is, man, you're ready. You know? Yeah. So I'm, I may be a little bit passionate about this. You may have regret turning the microphone over to me. <laughs> no, I, I don't regret it's, it at all. It's just this, it's just a different way of thinking, right? Yeah. But yeah. you know, one of the things that I, I maybe an illustration of this, Jim, uh, real quick is so whenever I started a new job, yeah, from one job to the next, I had people tell me all the time, take two weeks off before you start that new job. Yes. Go into the new job. Rested. Yeah. Energized. And sometimes I listened. And sometimes <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 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 so I do think there is there's really something to this third yeah. rhythm. It's it's it, this third rhythm. It's almost like we look at Sabbath as a reward for a hard week's work. And mm. maybe it's not a reward for a hard week's maybe it's what launches us into. Yes, I agree. A full week of work. Um, and so, you know, as as we're kind of thinking this through and wrestling with it, what I what I care about the most uh about everything we're talking about here today is that you as a as a leader, you as a husband, as a wife, are um working on these three rhythms, these three yeah. ideas that that my day needs a finish line. Yes, it that does. my week needs a pause where yes, I I I remember, look, man, everything I get to do is because of God's grace and mercy. And the Sabbath is a weekly reminder of that. It's a weekly reminder of how how much God is in this, 
how much I depend on him to do it. It's funny, you know, that that mm-hmm. on my Sabbath, God works. He's still working. Yes. You know, and uh, yes. I had somebody say this. Uh, you, we can't, and, and I won't say who it was, but it was a pretty prominent leader one time say, we, we can't rest until the work is done. And I want, I was in the same room. Yeah. And I, and I, I was intimidated because of the stature of this leader. This is just a national, I, but I wanted to raise my hand and say, you know what? But our work's never done. So right. does that mean we can never rest? Right. And so if you operate mm-hmm. with that mentality that I'll rest when the job is done, if you're in the ministry, your job is never done. No, nope. it's just never done. Mm-mm. So get get used to that idea. Yeah, be be reasonable and realistic about what you can and can't do in the course of a day or a week. You know, we, yeah. you know, and, and you might be thinking, why does I even care about this stuff? Oh well, my! <laughs> you know, I hope I hope I hope that by now, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you've answered that question already. But. Yeah. My guess is if you do these well, if we, Jim, if you and I do these well, our work is going to be more fruitful. Yeah. We'll probably be able to stay in the game longer. Absolutely. I think we'll remember that our work and our ministry belongs to God, not us. And yeah. and it's quite possible we're going to have a lot more fun along the way. Absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. I think God is big enough to call us to do something that has significance to it and to do it well and to do that for a long time and to have a lot of fun, to break records, having fun yeah. along the way. Um, yeah. So that's what's on my mind yeah. uh, with today's I, episode. So uh, one, one last thought, and that was, this is several months ago, I woke up to a day that could be anything I wanted it to be. I felt like the Lord said to me, you can put your hand to anything the day you want to, but whatever you choose not to put your hand to today, I will put my hand to. Mm-hmm. And I just, I remember that just, and there's days where I got so much to do. I got to do this in the lawns growing in the pool and the, you know, it, whatever you don't put your hand to today to honor me, I will honor you by putting my hand to. So I'm the backhoe. I'm the pneumatic power. You're the shovel power. Dig a hole if you want to, but I'm, I'm telling you, I can do more if you'll trust me and rest. Than you can do without me. And if I honestly, if I'm not obeying Sabbath guidelines, I'm working against God's creative order. Yeah. The order he put in the garden. I've decided I have a better way. I, I've made the same mistake. I committed the same egregious sin that my ancestors did in the garden, where they decided that there, there, was, a, there was a different way than God's way that would be a better way. It, there just isn't a better way. So, John, right. thank you so much for your thoughts. I, I agree completely. I think this is... I think it's really timely because summertime is the time where we work twice as hard to achieve half as much. And, and maybe, maybe it's just a, it's a good reminder that Jesus said, I will build my church and you get to help, but I will build my church. So right right on. Well, our dear listeners and watchers, I I hope this has been a great blessing to you. It's been a great blessing to me uh, to hear, just to to listen. Um, Boy, just remember you are not God. Matter of fact, today, my good goal might be today to resign from being the creator and sustainer of the universe that you might look back on today. The day you resigned from being God is one of the best days of your life. Um, Be, be on his team, but don't sit on his throne. It's a horrible mistake, tremendous consequences. And so we are praying for you. We love you. We believe in you. It's Tuesday and you have not quit. So that is, that is, that is an amazing accomplishment. Give yourself a pat on the back. And uh, continue, keep pushing, keep resting, keep believing, keep striving, keep, keep pausing. Every, the, the rhythms that God has for you, keep those rhythms. Let God be your blesser. If it doesn't come from God, it's not a blessing. Trust me, you can build it, but you can't sustain it. Every blessing comes from God. If it doesn't come from God, it's not a blessing. It's something else. So God bless you. God bless your families, your ministry, your legacy as you continue to lead from a land.